Uh, I have only two slides after this one, uh, giving the physical arguments behind uh, what I did. The mathematical details are contained in this paper. I should add that, as you know, uh, many different ideas on quantum measurement, many worlds, and quantum gravity have been presented here. I certainly don't claim that this is the right idea. It is something that I like. So, many worlds or collapse. As we know, broadly, there are two ways of explaining what happens in a quantum measurement. One is the Everett many world interpretation supplemented with decoherence so that the different worlds do not interfere with each other, or the collapse of the wave function. I like to quote Max, who I think in one of his papers wrote that the many worlds is extravagance of universes but economy of assumptions and collapses economy of universes but extravagance of assumptions. So I try to justify today that collapse is economy of assumptions and economy of universes. So which amounts to trying to give a theoretical argument that favors collapse, uh, which perhaps is useful in the light of the fact that there is no experimental evidence as of today which favors one interpretation or the other. My starting point is the idea that classical time is external to quantum mechanics. It is part of the classical universe uh, which consists of classical matter fields which produce classical gravity and hence generate a classical space time. Suppose there were no classical matter fields in the universe. Uh, there would be no classical space-time. This is indirectly a consequence of the Einstein whole argument. Essentially, Einstein said that if you want to preserve general covariance, you would lose the point structure of space-time. Unless the dynamic metric fields are determined by matter. By matter, of course, he meant classical matter fields. If there are no classical matter fields, suppose there are only pure quantum matter fields uh, in the universe, uh, then the, ma the metric would have quantum fluctuations and as a result of the Einstein whole argument, there would be no point structure to the space-time. How do I do quantum mechanics in that case? That is, suppose our universe has only quantum mechanical objects, no external classical world to depend on, I still ought to be able to formulate quantum mechanics. And uh, my claim is that when, when you try to do that, you find that quantum mechanics as we know it is a limiting case of uh, underlying nonlinear quantum theory with the nonlinearity becoming important and the, at the Planck mass energy scale. And hence, it is this nonlinearity which, to my mind, favors the uh, collapse picture over the many worlds picture. Okay, so this is the last slide. We build up this argument <coughs> in favor of collapse in a step of four, as a st set of four steps, which is very similar in spirit to how you would try to construct general relativity starting from Minkowski space time by little by little adding matter to it. First you have empty space-time, that's Minkowski, you add some matter to it, so then you have linear Einstein equations, so essentially Newtonian gravity. You some add some more matter, the theory becomes non-linear, and gravity drives itself, and you arrive at Einstein equations. So I'm trying, now we have to do something absolutely analogous to that, and with the major difference that the matter that is present is completely quantum mechanical in nature. It has no external classical source to depend on. So we try, try to imagine that we can make such a theory uh, of quantum mechanics uh, which doesn't make reference to an external time. But as and when external classical fields become available, this theory must become equivalent to standard quantum mechanics. So step one, 
Imagine a system of quantum particles with total energy much less than Planck energy. The space time is what there, there's then some notion of a space time. I can't say what it is. I will loosely call it a quantum mesmer because he's space time. Because the total energy is much less than Planck energy, uh, it's like setting the gravitational constant to zero. M is much less than M Planck, so there's no gravity. So I call it a quantum Minkowski space time. And the equation of motion of particles, these quantum mechanical particles, would be the analog of a Klein Gordon equation on a flat background space time. There's no gravity feeding back on these particles. Step two, if the total energy is increased, the background space-time has a weak, linear, quote-unquote, quantum gravitational field, and the equation of motion is the analog of klein gordon equation on a curved background, what we usually call QFT on a curved background, except that now this quote-unquote unquote, curved background is like a quantum Minkowski field on quantum Minkowski space-time on which weak gravitational fields are sitting. Uh, step three, this is where things become interesting. If the total energy becomes comparable to Planck mass or Planck energy, we have a nonlinear quantum gravitational field. This is the analog of the situation where GR appears in ordinary space-time. The gravitational field becomes strong enough to start self-gravitating. So it's the analog of situation here is quantum gravity, quantum gravitates. Something that we are not normally used to thinking of in the usual picture, but something which we would like to do here. So think of what happens to the klein gordon equation, the analog of the klein gordon equation for the motion of particles. They are producing some gravity, quote unquote quantum gravity, that quantum gravity is now going to feed back on their motion, and clearly this feedback is nonlinear if the gravitational field is sufficiently strong. And this is what makes the equation of motion nonlinear. It's like uh, if you had a Schrodinger equation, the Hamiltonian starts depending on the state. So this is the argument for saying that if the gravity becomes strong enough, the equation of motion becomes nonlinear. And lastly, uh, suppose there were only one particle of mass comparable to Planck mass, its equation of motion would be nonlinear because of its self gravitational interactions, a special case of number three. I should emphasize that the situation is different uh, from, say, what Penrose considers as gravity inducing wave function collapse because the gravity that one is talking of here is quantum gravity, and seen from an external space-time, this would be a nonlinear Schrodinger equation, which perhaps could induce uh, collapse, and which is the reason for thinking that uh, the many worlds probably is less favored compared to the collapse picture. Thank you.